low testosterone and high cortisol, the duality of testosterone itself, anabolism versus catabolism. This is an absolute health warning and something that I finally put together with evidence-based data. This is a study presented in the American Journal of Cardiology this year where it talks about decreased testosterone levels precede a myocardial infarction in both men and women. Here it is. Been waiting for this for years to do this. This is where I shine. We know that there is clinical evidence that supports when men, not to mention women, but more common and more subjectively seen with men that have low testosterone are at risk for myocardial infarction, acute coronary syndrome, heart attacks, where they will develop medical disability and even death, where they will receive either stents or bypass potentially. We know that that low testosterone relates to that in the data. And it's so controversial that we even have data saying that taking testosterone can cause the same issues, which is clinical coronary artery disease. This is an amazing presentation for you guys. Put the thinking caps on and follow me on this. We know that low T increases potential cardiac events through, through th exacerbating thrombosis, impaired fasting glucose, prediabetes, and systemic inflammation. These are just the basics that are related to low testosterone states. Hold that thought. What causes low testosterone? Multifactorial. Typically, it's going to be related to being overweight and being heavy in the abdomen, in the central obesity and leading to diabetes and impaired fasting glucose, but this is a huge vicious cycle and spectrum. Let's move over to cortisol. Something that for me as an internal medicine expert for years, I'm very I'm I'm always leery about the the snake oil guys and the 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 non-doctors that talk about hyper cortisolism and issues with the adrenal complex and cortisol and stress and then selling you something, okay? Because this is very complicated, cortisol. Of course, there's a relationship with the hypothalamus pituitary and the adrenal access. Now, I have all these videos on the anabolicdocapp.com and I have access points for you guys to work with me directly live in videos, man-to-man -man Zooms, and I have a mailbag where I answer questions, but they're not patients. They're scenarios that I respond to. So back, that's how you guys can access more of what I'm doing for you. Men, on androgens, concern for your health. Cortisol. Cortisol is very complex. I'm going to explain to you through this presentation how it relates to testosterone that can end up causing a heart attack. Cushing's disease is medical condition where you have an increase of cortisol. It's pathologic. There's two types. It comes from what happens up in the brain, the hypothalamus pituitary, and also in the adrenal complex itself, just in the adrenals. There's two parts. There's a primary and secondary. It's very complex. We're not going to go into that. So that's real. How many people really have Cushing's? I'm going to go into the recommendations in the end with the labs. Not many people, but I'll tell you what to do if you think you do have it. So most cortisol increase is from stress. It's a stress response. 
in America, in the civilized world, if you will, how civilized actually can it be when we live with unbelievable stress? No wonder we have heart issues and low T. Let's keep going. So cortisol goes up from stress. You're living with stress. You're adapting to stress. And the way you cope and adapt to stress is through cortisol. This is fact checkable, guys, right here. So stress response comes under real medical, which is rare. Oh, next runs quick. Overweight, when you're diabetic and pre-diabetic, this is type 2 diabetic, diabetes, not these people that are type 1 and it's just from a virus and they become an insulin-dependent diabetic young. That has nothing to do with this. This is type 2 diabetes. This is insulin resistance in America, almost half the country or maybe more. Foods, bad foods that we eat that lead to the obesity and the, the overweight and systemic inflammatory diets. See your nutritional gurus, you guys. I'm giving a boost to you guys for this. Sleep, the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm and stress and lack of exercise. You understand that you're sleeping poorly, you're stressed, your inflammation is up, you're eating poorly, you're stressed, your sleep is worse, your everything's worsening, boom! Cortisol goes up, but it's usually not measurable. In the study that I just presented, at the beginning of this presentation, they measured cortisol levels, they measured testosterone levels one month prior to the acute myocardial infarction in both men and women, and they found that for both men and women, 30 days prior to having a real heart attack, they had low testosterone. And the hypothesis is that it was a stress response from increased cortisol. You see? There it is. So, we know the duality of testosterone exists, where it's, it's certainly anabolic, anabolic with testosterone. Because I'm on it, but I'm careful. But you don't have the right levels of testosterone, potentially, it's catabolic. This is it. I put it together, it's so simple. So low T, increases, we have data for this. When you read this article, for all you fact checkers, you're gonna see the references where there's an inverse relationship between there's high cortisol, lowers testosterone, and low testosterone increases cortisol. You could fact check it for all, this is evidence-based medicine right here. It's also common sense, but there's the evidence. So guys that have low T, they have these events, Obviously, they don't feel good. Sex is bad. They're getting the bellies. The energy's down. It's all related here. So here's what I think you can do because there's a health warning on this. Now we have evidence that the low T precedes a heart attack for both men and women. But this now, women, please excuse me, this is now focused more towards what men can do because I think treating testosterone for women, it's, there's a lot of older mechanisms and there's a multitude of other issues that have to be considered. But men, I think we're simpler creatures and so many men love to, to treat their testosterone if they need it. Obviously, lose weight, get in great shape, all the exercise, everyone hears it 24-7, but can you do it? That's up to you to do first. But when you look at testosterone related to cortisol, here's your action plan. Get a history and physical. Get a history and physical by a great internal medicine doctor. Seek that doctor out in an academic medical center, any country, any state you live in. And first, do you have clinical signs and symptoms of Cushing's? I'm not gonna go into the buffalo hump, the moon faces and the striae. I'm not, but you ha, do you have clinical symptoms of what's high cortisol medically? I'll bet you don't, but you're gonna think you might, and I'm humble for that. Doctor needs to rule it out. Go to a good doctor. Don't go to one of a snake oil guy who's selling stuff. Stay away from them. That's one, that's medical history and physical. Two, 
Check your ABCDs. Hemoglobin A1C, I'm going to give you to here in the bottom with the labs. B is blood pressure. C is cholesterol. D stands for two things here. Deposition disease, of course, for men that are on androgens with the red blood cells. And then depression. See that? And stress. You see that? Right there. So can you work on this? We know that, that people that are stressed have heart attacks. We've known it, but now we have relations to at least to androgen state of lowering and a vicious cycle. So that's important, A, B, C, D, and D is depression and stress. But everyone knows they're stressed and depressed potentially. What do you do about it? You have to figure it out for yourself. That's why I have the app to help you with this. Because I used to be a primary care doctor and I took care of women too. Did not just starting antidepressants, but they may help you. They may actually help you. There's a bunch of great drugs that are out there and I'm not pushing drugs. But I use the drugs myself, put the chemistry together. And of course, cognitive behavioral uh, treatment and, and seeing great psychologists and social workers and great therapists and, and meditation and spiritualism. Of course, but can you do it? Is it functional? Can you do it to get the job done to protect yourself from having a health consequence like a heart attack? It's number one cause of death and disability in this country. It's so sad. The relations are right here in part. Next, what can you do? Here are your labs. You want the labs? Here are your labs. CBC, comprehensive metabolic panel, hemoglobin A1C, urinalysis, lipid panel, thyroid panel. Next, when I think about the cortisol, you can get the AM cortisol, a fasting AM cortisol, but so much of it is normal. I've seen thousands of patients over decades we scratch our head. I know my cortisol is normal, doctor, but what? It's subclinical. Do you think these people, the, the 30 days before they had the MI, have they presented with having elevated cortisol if they checked it months before? The answer is no. This this not happened, does it? You can't find it on the radar screen. If you do, you have Cushing's. This is subclinical. This is where it's mild hypercortisol is a mild. If you're on that cusp, you got to go see a good doctor. It's paroxysmal. It's up and down. It's paroxysmal means it's up and down. You can't find, that's the relationship to this, to that, and then the heart attack was paroxysmal. It was but 30 days prior, they had low T, and the, one of the concepts here in this, this uh, research paper is that it was related to stress response and potentially cortisol they identified. Read the paper, read the paper. Now, what do you do? See endocrinology. I'm an internist, obviously I'm an expert testosterologist. I'm the first and only one in the world right now. These are endocrinology doctors. No one knows more about the adrenal complex and Cushing's disease and cortisol than an endocrinologist. Don't go to anyone else but an excellent endocrinologist, number one. Rule out Cushing's versus something else. Rule it out. I'm telling you what to do. Get, write this down and bring it to the doctor. Then, of course, other things you can check. Impaired fasting glucose. You could check IGF if you think that's, but this is lower, lower, this is lower on the list. Highly sensitive CRP, the, the thyroid, and of course, testosterone, gentlemen. I don't know if women want to check it and treat their testosterone. It, it's something that's going to be more complex. Is it worth it for you as a woman to treat your testosterone? I should do a video on that because I've taken care of women that are on testosterone, but I don't feel comfortable treating women on testosterone. It's too complicated. So the testosterone and the, the total in the free testosterone, ultra-sensitive estradiol, and then is it worth it to treat number five, is it important if you're a man and you have low, low normal testosterone, you're, you're not going to be able, you're working on these variables, the weight, the diabetes, the food, the sleep, but is it important to treat tes with testosterone if you're, a, if you're low or low normal and you have symptoms of hypogonadism, testosterone for a man, sex and the energy, we know, I know, I know that 
you can treat it carefully with not too much testosterone and the heart will be okay. But you have to look at the, you have to manage this with the ABCDs, A1C, blood pressure, cholesterol. That's what I'm doing on the app for you guys. You have to understand, I'm putting all this together for the, really with that piece of paper and that research paper, I couldn't believe I actually found it. And it's in one of the major journals for cardiology currently today, 2022. I hope you guys really like this. Whew, this was a lot. And I know it's complex, so give comments. I can't answer all your comments, guys, but come to the Anabolic Doc app. Come to the meetings. Look at my information. I put special clinical information, informational videos just on the app that I don't put here because it's not the right venue here on YouTube. This is just general information to get you guys thinking and to give you great information and aspects and to tickle you and to give you direction. But I'm not your doctor to go see your doctors. I want you to work with great healthcare providers and that's the beauty of YouTube platform here. So there it is. I really hope you guys enjoy this another didactic presentation on my whiteboard and you can understand this and more importantly i really hope this helps all you guys in the world thank you so much